Welcome to worship. We're happy that you were able to join us wherever you may be. Please join us in our call to worship. Jesus calls us into this house of worship. We come with open ears, minds, and hearts. We allow Jesus to challenge our assumptions. And we, and we grow, grow in faith, faith and understanding. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the world to see. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church gathered today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine through the darkness. Christ be our light. Shine church gathered today. Longing for food, many are hungry. Longing for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others, shared until all are fed. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church gathered today. Longing for shelter, many are homeless. Longing for warmth, many are cold. Make us your building, sheltering others. Walls made of living stone. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Be our light, shine in your church, gathered today. Many the gifts, many the people, many the hearts that yearn to belong. Make us to be servants to another. Signs to your kingdom come. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather to. Let us join together in our confession and forgiveness. We confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, Jesus, Jesus shows, shows us all the ways that we fall short. He also provides a way out of the holes we dig ourselves into. Forgive us our sins and show us how to make better choices, be better friends, parents, kids, partners, and co-workers. Let Christ's light shine through us. For the sake of Jesus, we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Friends, Jesus does indeed forgive. Jesus cleanses us of our sin and recreates us in God's image. Receive the entire forgiveness of all your sins. Go and walk free of guilt, shame, and sin. You are made new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And join me in our prayer of the day. Healing Lord, when, when Jesus, Jesus healed the man born blind, the Pharisees didn't know how to interpret the signs. Open our hearts so that we may receive what you offer, healing, faith, and new life. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. It is so good to see you. Well, I remember when I was a little girl, I just loved to play in the sandbox or if there was some dirt that I could dig into. That was so much fun. And if there was some water, that was even better. I could mix some water with that dirt and I could make mud pies and all kinds of stuff for supper. And I bet you like to play in the mud too. Well, when I would do that, I discovered, or my mom discovered, that usually I had just as much mud on me. So then I got to take a bath, which was always fun. I got to wash that mud away. So today, Jesus makes some mud, a little different than making it for supper, and he doesn't do it for fun. He and his disciples come across a man who is blind from birth, and they start talking about how, who sinned. Was it he or his parents? And Jesus thinks to himself, ah, oh, they don't get it. So he mixes some of his saliva with the mud or with the dirt so that he can make this mud and he, he gently puts it over the blind man's eyes. And you might think that's kind of gross, but way back when Jesus was around, they thought that saliva had some therapeutic qualities and that it could heal. So it was very a very logical thing to do. So after Jesus puts the mud on the blind man's eyes, he says, go wash. Wash that mud away in the pool of Siloam. And it was almost like, you could say it was like a big bathtub. So he washed away that mud. So after he did that, you know what happened? He could see. He was blind, but now he could see. So he ran to tell his parents. He said, I was blind, but now I see. And they were so excited. But then the neighbors started asking questions, and they didn't know how to explain how he was blind and now he could see. So they go to the Pharisees and they start doing what we today would call an investigation. They ask all kinds of questions to try to figure out what exactly happened. So you would think that everyone would be happy for this man and that they would be celebrating that he could see, but instead they were trying to figure out how Jesus did it, and that he was, he wasn't, it wasn't from God. It was rather a sinner that healed this man, and that just couldn't happen. So today, in our lesson, you're going to hear all about this interrogation of the people. So listen carefully, and you will hear Jesus say that as long as I'm in this world, I am the light of the world. And through me, you will see God and you will experience God. So I invite you to listen carefully and see if you can hear all the ways that Jesus is talking about. So good to see you. We'll be back next week. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Bye. Our reading today is from the Gospel of John, the ninth chapter. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, 
this man or his parents, that this man was born blind. Neither, Jesus answered, neither this man nor the parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had not seen him before as a who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is it not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it must be someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how is it? How were how the blah blah. Then how were your eyes opened? He answered. The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the they brought to the Pharisees the man who had been formerly blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do they say? What do you say about him? It is your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents, uh, called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked him, Is this your son? who you say was born blind? How then does he see now? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it, how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know is though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are the disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, This here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, but yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one 
who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had, when Jesus heard that they had driven him out, he found him. And he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And so is he, sir. And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. The gospel of the Lord praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a familiar story. We hear it often in worship and in Sunday school. There are a few things that struck me as I read through this narrative once again. I never really no noticed before the excessive number of references to sight, blindness, light, and darkness used to help us see who Jesus really is. I also find it interesting how the writer of John has carefully woven into the theme of sight and blindness the concept of sin. I was also reminded that this story is in, divided into seven little packages, seven scenes. So it might be good to kind of use that as an outline. In scene one, verses one through seven, Jesus and the disciples are still at the festival of booths. And if you remember right, it was an eight-day Jewish celebration. As they were walking, they came across a man who was born blind, and the disciples asked the sin question. He, this man has a birth defect, so who sinned? Did he or his parents? And Jesus thinks to himself, Oh no, have they not seen my actions and heard my words all these days? So to open the disciples' eyes one more time, he mixes some dirt with his saliva and says, As long as I'm here, I am the light of the world. And to reveal God's love and mercy and power, Jesus gently spreads the mud on the man's face. And it is interesting that the man does not ask any questions or request anything from Jesus, but he hears Jesus and does exactly what he instructs him to do. He goes to the Siloam pool and washes and miraculously, he can see. Now John sees this, gospel, this occurrence not as a miracle, but as a sign, the sixth sign in the book of John that points people to God. In scene two, verses eight through 12, the man goes home to show his parents the good news, and their neighbors get all bent out of shape. 
The man tells them what he experienced, but they do not believe him. They want to know the identity of the miracle man and where he is. They have so many questions. Right now, many of them don't even believe that he is the same man, even though they walked right by him day after day as he begged in the streets. They are sure that there is some shenanigans going on, and they get the Pharisees involved. So the next three scenes, the Pharisees hold an ongoing interrogation or investigation, whatever you'd like to call it, first with the man, and then with his parents, and then back with the man. And it is interesting that each time the man is asked about Jesus, he has a clear understanding of who Jesus is. In the fifth scene, the man sticks it to him. He says, here is the astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. If this man, Jesus, were not from God, he could do nothing. The man reveals their inconsistencies, so they drive him out of the synagogue. He is no longer welcome there, which I will come back to that a little later. It is no accident that this healing story is all about blindness. The events following the man's healing exposes the blindness of the Pharisees to see the truth of God and to see the truth of Jesus. It is helpful to know that the Pharisees were not bad guys. It is easy for us to blame them for all of Jesus' troubles. But when you understand that they were a division within the Jewish tradition that held tightly to oral and written traditions, rites, and rituals, you can see where they belong. Many of the traditions and beliefs of the Jewish tradition today came from their school of thought. They were pretty conservative and trying to figure it out. However, Jesus has a wiser, more grounded perspective on things of faith. He can see that holding on too tight to rigid interpretations of the law and scripture can cause problems. The whole healing episode causes quite a confusion among the Pharisees. He exposes holes in their thinking that they cannot reconcile. They believe people with disabilities were disabled because of sin, either their own or their parents. It was unthinkable that a man born in sin could be healed and that he could attempt to teach them anything about God. Verse 34. They also believed that it was unlawful to do anything on the Sabbath and that no one could heal apart from the no one could heal apart from God. And here, here, Jesus is healing on the Sabbath. None of these things seem to work together. The Pharisees' blindness remained because they were unwilling and unable to consider what they believed might be wrong. The Pharisee discover that it was time to do some troubleshooting. One possible explanation was that the man was never really blind and it was just a story told by the locals. But when they questioned the man's parents, the parents confirmed that the man had been born blind. When Presta talked about the healing, the parents declined to offer any explanation. If the Pharisees can't figure it out, they certainly weren't going to try. They do not want to risk being excommunicated from their faith community and the synagogue. synagogue. So the theme of sinfulness runs through this narrative. 
the Pharisees discuss Jesus' sinfulness, and then they talk about the sinfulness of the man born blind, and even reference his birth in sin. So scene seven, the story ends with Jesus' condemnation of the Pharisees, whose sin remains because unlike the blind man who recognizes the grace of God in Jesus' bestowing of sight and light in the blindness, in his blindness, the Pharisees insist that they see and know everything already. They are close to the gift of Jesus, the judge who can give them sight, but only to those who know that they are blind. In scene one, the man hears Jesus before he sees Jesus. In scene six, he actually sees Jesus. And the whole, through the whole story, there's a narration of his gradual sight to realizing who Jesus really is. And at the end, he addresses him as Lord and worships, worships him. Jesus himself reveals the importance of both sight and hearing when it comes to belief. He says to the man, you have seen him, and the one speaking to you is that one. Here is now a relationship between the man and Jesus. If you know me, you know my father. This story does not end here. It actually goes on through chapter 10 until 20, verse 21. And in a Reader's Digest version, we hear about more about the Pharisees and what they, their process of figuring this out. But we also hear that Jesus is the good shepherd. He reiterates that those who know him are his sheep. When they hear his voice, they follow him. Knowing in the Gospel of John articulates relationship. And John is all about relationships. Jesus, does not, Jesus did not come into the world to condemn, but rather to love the world and to have a relationship with us. In figurative language of the sheep and the shepherd, Jesus recasts the importance of seeing and hearing by creating new images for what has already occurred in chapter 9 between the blind man and Jesus. The blind man is more than one whom Jesus heals. He is one of Jesus' sheep, a member of his fold, of his flock. Like the sheep, the blind man hears Jesus' voice. Like the shepherd, Jesus finds the blind man when he has been cast out of the synagogue. And he provides the blind man more than just sight. He provides for him what he, as a good shepherd, gives to all his sheep, the protection of his fold, the blessing of needed pasture, and the gift of abundant life. The man was once living on the margins of the society, an outcast of sorts. He was once lost, but now and found, and he has a place. He has a relationship with Jesus. As a result, hearing and seeing are much more than ways by which one recognizes and believes in Jesus. They are, in fact, expressions of a relationship with Jesus, and a relationship with Jesus means a relationship with the Father, the Almighty God. Sight and hearing are critical to recognizing Jesus and God in the healing of the blind man. 
as I was reflecting on this sermon, I really wanted to give this blind man a name. In fact, I found the perfect name, a Jewish name, Cesar, which means sight or wisdom. But as I worked and put the story together, it just didn't feel right to use a name. And I realized that John didn't give him a name on purpose because he wants us to see ourselves in the dialogue. John wants us to experience what the blind man felt as his understanding and faith in Jesus grew. And John wants us to relate to the Pharisees. How often do we remain blind to the truth because we are unwilling or unable to consider what we might, that we might be wrong? Are we so certain that we know all about everything there is to know about Jesus? Are we sure that we have it all right? We learn from the man once blind that there is a gift in accepting that we might be wrong. There is a freedom in letting go of what we think we know to explore the things that we don't yet know. It is a hard thing to do. But when we acknowledge what we don't know, the scales of our blindness start to fall away. And we can see the magnificence of what Jesus wants to show us. Dear friends, Jesus invites us to see the light of the world and hear the good shepherd. He says, if you do, it can be very eye-opening. Amen. Let us join together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. When we close our eyes to your possibilities, we willfully remain in a prison of our own certainty. Flood our darkness, O God, with the brilliance of your freedom and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. With mud and water, you restored a blind man's sight. Reveal to us the restorative powers of your created world, all that exists to make us whole and fill us with abundant life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Forgive us for all the ways we blind ourselves to the truth. Avoidance, willful ignorance, stubbornness, and delusion. Lead us away from harmful habits and perpetual self-absorption. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As you stirred up the healing waters of Shiloh, so stir your spirit in us that we might also be restored. Bestow your healing hand upon all who need it. Especially today, Lord, we lift to you those people and families in our prayer ministry here at First Lutheran, and those people and situations that weigh heavy on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Like the saints who now walk in light perpetual, we seek a closer communion with you. Shine brightly through our lives as you did through theirs. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heal us, teach us, embrace us, and hear the prayers of our hearts, O Lord. For your mercy is great and given freely to all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. And friends, let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Shine, Jesus, shine. i 
Have a wonderful week and remember that you are the church wherever you may be.